Hello, hello. <laughs> so we did one without technical difficulties. And then guess what? It happened again. I feel like since spooky season's coming up very soon, I'm just going to blame it on the ghosts that <laughs> are maybe haunting my lives. Um, but can everyone see me and uh, hear me? Yay! <laughs> so we thought it was one cord. We thought it was one cord. So then we unplugged everything. We were going to put the webcam up. And then we realized it was another cord that was really easy to fix. Um, and so we fixed that. And then, bam, I'm able to be live. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for being patient while we figure that all out. I thought I had everything good this time. <laughs> it's okay. How is everyone doing? Thank you so much, Becca. You're always so kind. Yeah. Yay. We got it working. I was so freaked out. I was like, we've been doing so well in the last one. And then weird, weird SHIT ended up happening. Hello from, oh, hi, Louisiana. Hi. <laughs> I know. It's, I need to like, when we do one week straight without technical difficulties, I feel like we need to have a celebration or something. I don't know how the celebration is going to go, but I feel like we have to do something. <laughs> Hi, Nova. Is your name actually Nova? Because I told you my daughter's name is Nova. I love that name. Oh, thank you so much, TJ. <laughs> oh, thanks, Becca. <laughs> You know, I'm doing well. I um, I feel like every lead up to a live balancing the two children is definitely a balancing act that I'm slowly starting to figure out how to do properly. Um, but I'm doing well. I'm I'm doing well. I'm feeling good. Other than the technical difficulties, I'm 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 doing well. <laughs> oh, Felicia, Felicia. I love that you have Nova, though, as your handle. Such a great name. And Felicia's a beautiful name, too. What's the weather like, Jen? Is it is it gloomy over there? In Los Angeles, I feel like it's always uh, sunny. But honestly, the last, like, five months, we had a series of just rain and then a hurricane. So it's been kind of strange weather here in Los Angeles. Um, but for the most part, it's usually always sunny which I kind of get depressed by, to be honest. I kind of like having some days of some gloomy weather. Hi, Tucson. Oh, I love Tucson. I, lo I wanted to move to Tucson, by the way. I visited there uh, once. Was it one time? Yeah, and I wanted to move there. <laughs> Literally one time and I wanted to move there. I love Tucson. Oh, Riverside. It's overcast over there? Italy. Wow, I'm jealous. I want to be in Italy right now. I want to be in Italy without any technical difficulties. <laughs> that's, that's where I want to be right now. Great weather in New Orleans. Don't rub it in, Sam. <laughs> Don't rub it in. Well, I'm so glad we made it. Obviously, this is Eat Predators Daily. I'm your host, Alexa Nicholas. Let's digest. We have... um. A spooky season report, basically, to go into today. I don't know who... So, who's seen Night... Um, well, I was going to say Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> which is basically what my brain went to when I thought of Nightmare Before Christmas, you guys. I literally went to <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> That's maybe how old I am now. Hi, Colorado. So, yeah, who who's watched Nightmare Before Christmas? We're getting into spooky season, so I feel like it's appropriate for us to go into this because it's way beyond spooky and it's way beyond creepy. It's just uh, straight up alleged predatory behavior. Hey, Vegas. <laughs> spooky season. Honestly, it's my favorite holiday. I'm I'm not a huge fan. I mean, Chris, I mean, I feel like all the holidays are great because you get to take off of work and get cozy and I don't know, you know, watch some movies, 
et cetera, et cetera. But I love Halloween, to be honest with you. I don't know. And I love it with the kids, too. Like with Nova, it was just so much fun to go trick or treating with her. She was dressed up as a pumpkin for her first year. She was so cute. She was so cute as a pumpkin. So I get to live like vicariously through my children now um, during Halloween season. Oh, you watch it every Halloween? Wait, you watch... Oh, I'm I'm sorry to bum you out this this spooky season when it comes to Nightmare Before Christmas because I don't have a good tale um, to bring to you guys today. I, you know what? I don't like pumpkin spice. I'm not a pumpkin spice girl to be quite honest, but I love pumpkin pie. Like I love. It's like my favorite pie. I'm not really a huge fan of apple pie, but pumpkin pie, I love it. Pumpkin spice lattes. I just like my lattes straight, like straight up vanilla or just regular. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just like <laughs> maybe not that exciting when it comes to my lattes. OK, so a lot of people, it seems like, have seen Nightmare Before Christmas. Tim Burton film. Yeah. OK, so we're going to be getting into that today. But first, I did want to show everyone that we have the alleged dad t-shirts <laughs> which I'm super excited about I'm waiting for my sample still but I did want to show everyone what we got <laughs> because it's so it's so funny and we made it kind of like a classic rock dad t-shirt like kind of Grateful Dead style um to give homage to the dads out there um so I want to show <laughs> I want to show you what it looks like. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. We got it in black and we got it in white, um, which I'm stoked about. And I think the back of I think the back of them has yeah, the back of it has the um, our signature Eat Predators symbol, um, so that you know it is an Eat Predators T-shirt. But I'm super stoked about these T-shirts. I'm ready for my sample to come in. Also, this is just like our merch in general. I don't know if anyone's checked it out. Um, oh, someone became a member. Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Welcome. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Um, so yeah, so this is our merch, by the way. I don't know if anyone's checked it out. This is my favorite. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait. E Predators Academy is so funny. <laughs> Does anyone recognize these t-shirts from from Zoe 101 because that's that's really what I was trying to uh you know hint at here but I changed it you know from from PCA Academy uh to Eat Predators Academy and we also changed the wave to a shark fin because I thought it was funny for for you know the fact that it's a Predators Academy <laughs> It's pr I haven't gotten this one yet, actually. I need to get a sample of this as well. I'm like so behind. After having a newborn and being pregnant, I'm behind on everything, honestly. I'm surprised that I'm here um, even doing this right now. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, this, this one's and we have it in purple, too, um, which is the signature PCA uh, color from Zoe 101. Um, so if you want to support survivors while paying homage to uh, to Zoe 101, we got it. <laughs> it's right here. It cracked me up. Um, we launched this during the Dan Schneider episode, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, so we still have it up there and it's I think it's limited. We only have a few more left. So if anyone wants to get it, um, it's here on our website. This is the bag that I want. This is the one I'm waiting for. It's so amazing. It's like based off of like a French protest sign and it was about imperialism. And so we changed it from imperialism to predators, um, which is super fun. And it's in French. I don't even speak French, but I'm going to rock this tote bag. If you know what I mean, <laughs> I at least know what it means on the bag. Wait, did you have your birth, Alexa? Wait, what do you mean? Did I have my birth? I did have my birth. He's upstairs. <laughs> I had my birth. He's upstairs. But I had a home birth, if that's what you're asking. Wait, for me, I'm not going to watch. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I totally forgot about this. Wait, Jamie Lynn Spears is on Dancing with the Stars? Is this true? I thought it was a joke. I didn't know this was real. Am I just, I'm finding out about this now. <laughs> 
legit finding out about this now. Home birth. Yeah, I had a home birth. I did. Wait, wait. Jamie Lynn Spears is in Dancing with the Stars? Oh, man. Oh, okay. Well, you know, um, dance away, Jamie Lynn Spears. Dance away. That's pretty wild. It's so interesting. I just see, you know, the cancel culture thing is so funny that people complain about because I really don't see that as true because once someone's called out for something, it just seems like they get bigger almost or they get and then everyone else around them kind of dwindles like the ones that are accusing them of something or, you know, the survivors of them, et cetera. They just kind of dwindle. And then the ones that are, you know, the ones doing things are dancing they're dancing <laughs> dancing away hey mick oh thanks so much mick oh he's speaking french yeah see i don't I, i'm not good i see je, i see oh no i don't know what that means <laughs> I, I thought for one second i was like maybe i know what that means but i don't i only know what it means on the tote bag you guys that's as far as my french goes thanks so much mick yeah jamie lynn spears is just interesting i i you know, the whole thing with me, with, with Jamie Lynn Spears, I, I still think she was trying to send me her book, which is just so um, weird because when I ended up seeing the leaked pages of the book, there were like a bunch of lies about me and my mom and them. And I'm like, was she legit trying to send me that book without letting me know what was going on? Like, that's so weird to do. I would at least give a heads up like, hey, this is coming out <laughs> and like I have a couple things that I'm saying about this that maybe we should I don't know talk about first but that just wasn't that wasn't the case when it came to Jamie Lynn Spears she just wanted to straight up send me that book I, I did not read that book <laughs> by the way oh you speak French Mick well you, you might need to teach the the chat in me some French as you um come into all these live chats honestly I need to learn Drake Bell yeah Drake Bell is just shady um, yeah, I, that's a whole other episode. Maybe we should just, do people want to go into Drake Bell maybe sometime soon? Maybe like next week we can go into Drake Bell. Cause I would actually, I wouldn't mind doing that. I really wouldn't. Oh, uh, oh guys, by the way, we're going to have like a little, um, sign creating, um, live stream. I think this weekend, um, just my husband and I, we're going to show you how we make, our protest signs, basically. I think we're going to create one or two live. Um, so if anyone wants to come, grab a drink, you know, whatever, mocktail, um, and just uh, create a sign with us, we would love that. It's our first time not being alone doing it other than the first time a long, long time ago. Oh, yeah, Drake Bell. We'll get, in, we'll get into Drake Bell. Not in this live stream because I need to, like, properly pull everything up, but we can definitely get into Drake Bell. Also, yeah, again, September 28th, our protest at Scientology, 12 to 2 for anyone who wants to join us that lives in the Los Angeles area. Where is Shelly? I cannot say this enough. I don't think Leah Remini can say it enough. Um, and that's just the surface level of Scientology, right? There's just so much going on there. Um, but I do feel like there's this weakness in his wall um, on the fact that he just won't show Shelly. I mean, she hasn't been public since 2007. This is very concerning. Um, this is, in my opinion, a missing person. Um, if someone can't be seen or hasn't been seen in like over a decade, I think we should all as a society be worried about where Shelly is. Um, so the protest is coming up September 28th. We also have, uh, let's pull it up actually here. Where is it? Our Patreon Here's the ePredators Patreon. Someone can pull it up in the comment section. This is the funds that go towards our protests. So it makes these protest signs that I am sitting in front of. We need basically some funds for the paper, for the ink, and also we're going to bring water for everyone that's protesting and sunscreen if it's needed, if it's super sunny. Like during Nickelodeon, I almost, I almost fainted during Nickelodeon, to be quite honest with you, because it was so hot in Burbank. 
So, uh, yeah, sunscreen was very much needed. So that's what the funds go for for Patreon. So if you're not a member or you are a member, but you want to make sure that you're helping the advocacy work that's on the streets when it comes to e-predators, Patreon's a great way to do that. And we really, really, really appreciate that. Like, really appreciate that. It's not easy. A lot goes into the protests. My husband and I have lost so much sleep on creating the protest signs and uh, going to these protests. So every bit of support really means a lot. Yeah, do not, do not worry, Nova. Do not worry. Yeah, thanks, Adam, for putting it up there. And we have like some amazing, I don't know if anyone, is anyone a Patreon member in the chat? Because I do want to say thank you so much because honestly, that really, really helps us. And we're going to start protesting again now that I'm past um, my postpartum bed moments. I'm going to be back out into the streets. Well, we're actually also going to be protesting Hollywood Bowl during uh, Halloween uh, because of Danny Elfman playing there. So we have a lot of protests that are coming up. So thank you so much for helping. It really, really means a lot. I did meet Drake Bell. I, I, I sadly, I sadly met Mr. Bell. But we'll save it for another live because <laughs> I'll go deep into it and I don't want to like miss all the things we're talking about today. But I will. I promise next week we will go into Drake Bell 100 percent. Does anyone hear my daughter up there or is it just me? All right. So let's go into what we got going on today because there is um, a lot. What, what, what do we have here? OK, so Goosebumps trailer has emerged um, and guess just guess who one of the stars of Goosebumps is. Let's just watch a little bit of the trailer because honestly, Goosebumps was one of my favorite kids' books. Um, but look who's there. Nathan Brad, I'm the new English teacher. You live oh. here? Yeah. The old Biddle House. Is that Justin Long, you guys? The Biddle House. <laughs> I did hear the horrible story about the boy who used to live there. Wait, this feels like yeah, barbarian, but, but, but different, but like our childhood <laughs> version of barbarian, in my opinion. Like what, 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 who is Justin Long in this? What character could Justin Long possibly be in the Goosebumps? Uh, I don't know. How many books did they make? Honestly, I love Goosebumps too. And didn't they make a Goosebumps film like not that long ago with Jack Black? I feel like Goosebumps, I already stopped it. Wait, what? <laughs> My husband's like, don't play the trailer more than 30 seconds. I got it. I definitely got it. But yeah, I mean, wasn't there a Jack Black film that came out like years ago? Is this part of the same thing or is this like a total reboot? <laughs> Justin, just say you are adult long. <laughs> That is horrific. That's horrific. Wait, yep. Same director who did the Goosebumps film worked. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got it. All right, well, let's 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 keep watching it for another 30 seconds. Have you seen anything strange happening there? <gasps> Say cheese! Jesus, what is happening? No. Not that <laughs> Wait, Justin Long there is incredible. Wait, I want to go back. I want to go back. Wait. Oh. I feel like Justin... Wait, wait, you guys. I feel like Justin Long's um, alleged leaked DMs were way scarier than anything he experienced in Goosebumps. <laughs> um, honestly, I feel like Justin Long's real spook moment... Um, was uh, those alleged DMs with a uh, alleged fifteen-year-old girl? If you know what I mean, I don't think I don't think Goosebumps freaked him out as much as those DMs. Yeah, he's he's he is old. He's like literally over. I mean, what is he now? Forty something? Can someone pull up his? How old is Justin Long? <laughs> I'm glad you guys are laughing about that. But for real. I mean, did anyone see that Justin Long episode? He was legit sending 
He was legit sending himself, I think, like, in, I mean, talking about him going to a barber shop and then the girls calling him daddy. Um, and he was legit pretending he was his character from a Disney film. And he was like 40. And let's just say, you guys, like through the grapevine, you know, TikTok, TikTok on um, Justin Long. It's it's uh, allegedly coming. Um it's 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 allegedly happening. So he, in my opinion, is um, <sighs> do do do. You know, with the Russell Brand thing, like in plain sight. I mean, that's all of these uh, bros. To be quite honest with you, I mean, they are all in plain sight doing things. Eventually, something comes out. You know what I mean? And then everyone's like, "Oh my God, he's actually like that," and you're like. I mean, I feel like he even gave you enough signs. You know what I mean? Like he was legit throwing um, tons of bones um, at everybody um, to to see what kind of person he's like. Oh, he's 45. Yo, Justin Long is 45 years old. He's legit 45 years old. So that means he was like 40 years old when he was talking to this alleged 15 year old girl. I mean, that's just... I don't even un and then if someone's calling you daddy, like I said in my other video, that's time for the conversation to end immediately. You know what I mean? Like ASAP. Like that's when you just get out of there. But no, Justin Long was like, let's continue this and um, actually make this as if I'm adopting you, um, which is. Uh... Yeah, I'm yeah. Uh it's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming, Justin. A long time. It's just so true like when we see these red flags that come out in the media about these public figures that are acting in a specific way um that just gives us either a red flag or intuitively you feel off about something they've done, most likely that's not just it, right? There are so many other things that have maybe happened in their past or are happening currently or they're going to possibly do in the future. And that's usually always the tip of the iceberg. And this whole in plain sight thing with Russell Brand, it's like I really just see this time and time again. They are in plain sight and it will fall on the backs of survivors to, you know, expose these individuals and then people you know, maybe some do. There's a huge percentage that do believe them. And then there's a huge percentage that doesn't. And even with a documentary that comes out with an R kit, et cetera, you know, people are still doubting them. It's just so wild. It's like, what do, what does survive what do survivors have to do um to be believed at this point? Like, do they have to witness the actual, you know what I mean? It's just blowing my mind. Like, what do they need to believe survivors? What? If evidence isn't enough, their words not enough, police reports aren't enough, yada, 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 then what is enough? What is, I want to know what's enough for these individuals. Yeah, Jeepers Creepers for sure. And guys, you know something about Jeepers Creepers? Oh, I wish I pulled that up. The guy who directed Jeepers Creepers, Google him. Um, uh, a PDF file, a PDF file. I just learned this from Adam recently. <laughs> um, so hopefully everyone knows what I'm talking about. PDF file. Um, I think, I think allegedly I'm pretty positive. I'm not sure he was convicted, got out of prison, um, and then did Jeepers Creepers and like an other Disney film, which is so terrifying to even think about. Like shame on Disney for that. Also shame on Jeepers Creepers for that if they were aware of that, which I'm sure they were. It, it's just so creepy. But I want to know what's enough. Aren't we all at this point? What is enough for people to believe survivors? Like, what's enough? And then even when it comes to these predators, for example, it's just so upsetting because you come forward with your trauma and you come forward with your evidence and not only do other people not believe you and, and troll you, basically, not just that. It's not just that. But the predator also denies everything, even after they've 
ap- apologized to you, like what we saw with Justin Roiland. He literally sent like an apology. We saw that with Russell Brand in the documentary. He also did the exact same thing. And so even with apologies, evidence, et cetera, it just never seems like it's enough. Um, and my heart breaks for that aspect because then what could you possibly do at some point? What what do these individuals need to support survivors? What do they need? I want them to just tweet about that. What What is it? What is it that you're actually looking for? Because you're annoying me also at this point. All these men are jeepers creepers. <laughs> totally. Remember that song like jeepers creepers. I'm like hearing the song from the film, honestly. Yeah. 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 Ruin my life. Jane Doe number two. Yeah. Me too. Um, me too. Even when I'm not showing it, you know, um, being a survivor, um, it's really hard. Um, and, and even talking about these very sensitive subject matters that I'm doing on e-predators, you know, I'm triggered and I'm sure you guys have seen you know, multiple times me like break down in tears or I'm getting angry, you know, uh, even speaking about someone else's trauma is extremely hard to do because of my own life and my own trauma um, that I have. And so, you know, this is lifelong trauma when it comes to these things. And there are so many things stacked against survivors from statutes etc and and it seems like these trolls don't really understand um how the justice system works how the criminal system works they, they, they really just don't get how it works the only people that really see how it works in my opinion is survivors um they really see how the system is stacked up against them and then you have this whole world um, that's basically wanting to be there to witness your traumatic event, to believe you. And it's like, you want to be in, you want to witness my traumatic event to believe me? You know, like how sick in the head can someone be not to just take someone's word and evidence for it? It's just bizarre. Uh, yeah, there I was getting triggered again. Um, but it's just so aggravating. Hi, Melvin. Welcome, everybody. You know, I just, I just, survivors deserve support and everything stacked up against them. We got the patriarchy, the, the brooming process of the patriarchy. Everything's constantly stacking up against them. How to train your gap. Thank you so much. It's late in the UK, so I have to go, but catch up on this tomorrow. But love that you're supporting so many people. Oh, thank you so much, Gavin. That's so sweet. Rest, sleep well. Thank you so much. Hopefully we see you in the next live. Thank you so much, Gavin. But you know what I mean? I just, I really see just how much survivors have stacked up against them. And it seems like society still doesn't fully understand all the things stacked up against them um, and the stigmas around it. And I'm, I just want that to end. Um, but here we got Justin Long. Um, being in the kids version of Barbarian. By the way, I actually liked the film Barbarian. It was a pretty crazy film. I I did enjoy watching Barbarian. This is before um I actually came forward about the Justin Long. Sorry. Do you do you does anyone want me to talk about the Justin Long story a little bit before I go into um the rest of what we have today? It's only if people if you guys feel like you want to hear a little bit of the story, then I'll I'll go into it just a little bit. All right, I'm seeing some hearts here because I didn't really go in. I didn't really go into much of it on on H three. I I just did I did I make it? I didn't really go into the the driving there aspect. Did I a little bit? Did I really? Oh shit! <laughs> I didn't realize I told. I didn't realize that I told. Well, I don't know how many people. Oh, currently, Laura, welcome to being a member. Thank you so much. Thank you so so much. Nice to have you here. So nice to have you here. Yeah, a recap. Yeah. So basically, remember the friend that I told you all about who worked at Ledoux and. Her job was basically to bring other 
women to these tables that in my opinion were predators buying this table I when you think about the club scene by the way I mean rewind I don't I haven't been in the club since I was 15 which is actually scary to say that um I really have not um been in in a in a club in in a very long time um but my memory of club scene was just straight up the patriarchy. I mean, just straight up the patriarchy. You know, you go in there. There's these like tables that only these men with like money can get. And then these women basically get to have free drinks. And that whole concept of a guy buying you a drink. Let's think about that for a moment. Even though I think, OK, it's nice. Like my husband buys me a drink. He also bought me a drink in the beginning of him and I dating one another. Sure. Let's not even get into that aspect per se, but just the concept of a man buying a woman a drink. Um, while I'm on this live, it's I, I'm starting to realize like how patriarchal that is. It's like buying a woman a drink is already ridiculous because you know for so long that women weren't even able to have credit cards, access to like bank account, land, etc. Um, so there's that aspect, and then also just the aspect of getting a woman tipsy, right? getting a woman drunk, um, drunk enough to talk to you, basically, um, which which is very right. Keep fighting the good fight, Alexa. Appreciate you and all the survivors. Thank you so much, Rye. It's that, I don't know if that's your full name. I can't see. It says dot, dot, dot. But thank you so much. But you know what I mean? There's something very interesting about a man buying – like. Like it's like normalized, like hyper normalize a guy buying a girl a drink or multiple drinks. So anyways, in the club scene, I saw that a lot. I saw so many men buying women drinks to the point where they would buy a table that had bottle service where they got this like unlimited basically amount of bottles to not just drink themselves, but to give to other to give to women and to basically lure them over to their table. Um, and we know how expensive drinks are at a bar. Super overpriced. Ridiculous. Um, so the average person, you know, is of course going to be down for a free drink. But in the patriarchy, then a lot of women might feel like they owe that person something after they get the free drink or the next drink. And the more intoxicated they get, they might really lose sight of um, what was even happening in the first place. Um, and so that was basically the scene at Ledoux. My friend was, her job there was to basically recruit women, make them feel safe to head over to a table with a bunch of different guys. I saw guys from the show Entourage. I'm not even going to go into it. I saw stuff. I saw a lot of stuff. And <laughs> that's what it's like living in LA in the industry. You see stuff that you don't want to see. And so, yeah, that was her. Um, and that was Jonathan Togo, um, who in, you know, essay situation. And so that's how I actually came across Justin Long. Cause I guess he was staying with Justin Long for a little bit, or he was his roommate. All I knew is that he was staying there because he got designated a room with my friend at Justin Long's place, like legit his place. And so I was stuck with Justin Long uh, in the living room and it was weird. You know, I remember him playing the vinyl and like the whole thing and like giving me drinks and like, guys, I mean, honestly, I said in age three, like, I don't even think I was 16 yet. I'm pretty sure I was like almost turning 16, but I was 15 and I looked super young. Like I would, I'm just one of those girls that always looked really young for her age. Yeah. Objectification. Totally. So yeah. Anyways, recap on this. Justin Long was definitely creepy, in my opinion, and also who he was living with or letting stay with him. That guy, Jonathan Togo, was like straight up, in my opinion, a predator, um, just straight up. And I mean, my friend was a minor. And so, yeah. And then Jonah Hill shows up and everything was so hyper normalized that it's just so sad to look back at it. And it really do does stem from the patriarchy and also stems from drinking culture. Like I really do think 
like bar club scenes can be a very dangerous space. Like what I was saying earlier um, at the la- in the last live about Russell Brand and like how alleged predators try to find spaces that they'll get away with things, right? I really do feel um, a- another s- safe space for um, a predator is a bar or a club, et cetera, right? Um, everyone's intoxicated, um, and it, and things can slide in a way that they wouldn't normally slide. And that's just another space that I think these individuals definitely are protected in. Um, 100% in my opinion, growing up in the club scene, in the bar scene, I saw it. And I saw a lot of individuals just be able to act in plain sight the same Russell Brand scenario just in plain sight and no one did a thing about it no one no one and so we got to be very careful about how we protect these spaces right so if we're spiritual we got to make sure these spiritual spaces aren't allowing any type of activity that could harm someone else or we're not leaning over to too much neutrality where um, we're not thinking about other individuals getting harmed right or if we're in the bar scene club scene we got to make sure that once again that no one could get harmed in those spaces and if we are a bystander in that scenario that we're making sure that we're stepping in so like all of our spaces it's not necessarily the spaces that are to blame um but it's the bystanders around these spaces and how predators could definitely take advantage and or exploit and manipulate those spaces so that they can just kind of breeze on by and the music industry is definitely one of them because of rock and roll and this whole aspect of an artist, you know, he's just an artist, right? Like artists are just like that. Like, oh, he's in a band. Like that's what bands are like. They, they just like date minors. And it's like, okay, the way that you're phrasing a crime is, oh, wow. That's not how you phrase a crime. He's just, they just date minors. Like they're just so outside of the system. And you get that with rebels too. So you got to be careful of rebellious spaces. Um, I would say I'm a little bit of a rebel. I mean, with my channel, like I definitely love the rebellious spirit. I love radical revolutions. Like I love that energy. Um, But we have to be careful on that mindset where someone can maybe use how they go up against the system as a means to um, do something that's not morally correct, right? They'll say, oh, um, you know, oh, the laws, like that's the man, that's the system. But you have to check it in a way, is this morally correct, right? Was that a child, et cetera, that you're talking about? So like how far do we allow, you know, even rebellious behavior, radical behavior to extend? We have to be very aware of that. These spaces, predators will prey on weaknesses. And that's a weakness of the rebellious radical era is that there was so much um, fluidity and open mindedness that it would allow a predator to get into that space, harm others without many repercussions because of how lenient, how lenient those spaces were. You know what I mean? (laughs) Am I making sense? (laughs) Sometimes I go and I'm like, I feel like I'm talking to myself a little bit. Yeah, a 15-year-old will always look 15. It's 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 so true. You're a rebel and an action one. Thank you. But I'm a rebel that doesn't want to harm other individuals. And that's what we have to be super careful about. You know what I mean? We 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 got to protect our spaces as a society so that they don't get tainted also by these predators because predators will just come up in these spaces and ruin them. We'll like straight up ruin them. Like a space that's exploring open-mindedness, thinking about different ideas about things. A predator will come in there, exploit that, and then make the whole entire thing look corrupt. You know? So that's why we got to be very careful of them. It, it, it's They ruin things. They'll ruin music. They'll ru- ruin film. They'll ruin movements. They'll ruin, ruin a whole bunch of things because they find the weakness. They exploit that. They go in and then everything else tarnishes because of their behavior. Um, And so we got to be very careful about that. Really. And it's not just essay, just predatory behavior. Just 
we got to be very wary how open ended um, we are as uh, a society, you know, like we got to be very wary of that. And if we are, we got to be aware of individuals around us and how they're perceiving that and if they can find that as a weakness um, to exploit a rebel with the cause. I love that. Yeah, a rebel with the cause. Hi, everyone. Hey, Simi. I see you, Simi. Okay. So now that we cleared that up, that was a little bit of a recap about bar, club culture, etc. That's how I feel. Let's keep our spaces safe. Um, and let's move on to, you know, what we're talking about today. Let's let's move through the goosebumps thing because honestly, Justin Long just annoys me. Look at him. Is that him? Oh, that is him. Is that him? scary like, is he the bad guy in this I'm, I'm just I'm not even sure um okay oh whoa I didn't realize that that was gonna come up um uh, right away okay so maybe he is the bad guy he's really kind of playing the bad guys these days and barbarian the same thing and now we got this which I'm assuming he he looks like Jeffrey Dahmer or something like he's looking very uh scary very scary <sighs> okay, so I don't know if anyone has been hearing about Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas, but I wanted to go through that for like half a second just because it, it appears to be that Sophie Turner sues Joe Jonas, demands kids be returned to England after being wrongfully detained amid split. And we all know how, you know, those headlines went when it came to their split. In my opinion, it really did seem like some man was trying to like paint the mom as, I don't know. It, it, it seemed like a whole bunch of misogyny and, and the, the, the normal bogus behavior when it comes to TMZ and, you know, all of these publications in general. Like they really paint usually the woman or anyone that's not like a white guy in that scenario. They really seem to paint that individual as somebody who's doing something wrong. They're problematic. They're crazy. We saw it with Britney Spears. It just happens time and time again. Um, so when I was seeing the Sophie Turner articles with Joe Jonas, it just seemed strange. Like why were all the first articles about her like being an unfit mom or like being a partier? Um, and it and it really did seem like someone was trying to paint that picture for their own benefit. And so, yeah. So when I tweeted my tweet about Joe Jonas and my personal experience with him when I was a very young teenager and like, you know, guys, I think he's three years older than me. So... If I was like 15, like I, he was like possibly 18. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, there's that. He was definitely older than me. But when I posted that, I was like, oh shit. You know, did I maybe say um, too much there or did I intervene in a way that maybe wasn't okay to do? Like it made me nervous just because of how many individuals that were part of his fandom really started to chime in and make me feel crappy for stepping forward and saying my own opinion. But now looking at Sophie Turner in this scenario and she's suing him um, for wrongfully detaining her children, you know, I'm starting to feel like maybe, you know, allegedly that Joe Jonas was doing just that maybe. Um, because why, why was there such bad press about Sophie Turner in the wake of this whole scenario with Joe Jonas? It just seems very bizarre and peculiar and suspicious, in my opinion. <laughs> Jonas Brothers are trash. You see this? Like, they have a song called like Waffle House or something. And it's the weirdest song I've ever seen. I don't know what, if they love waffles a lot. I'm not really sure what they're, um, they seem to um, respect the waffles a lot more than they're respecting Sophie Turner. So in my opinion, like the, the song seemed like a lot more enthusiastic about waffles than the mother of his children. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying, yeah, he was narcissistic when he was younger, honestly. But here's the thing with these Disney and Nickelode Nickelode <laughs> Nickelodeon culture, um, they, they do breed and indoctrinate um, narcissism. And that's really the whole thing in Hollywood. 
um, is you get put into this. Also, just being put into that situation and, and the fandom that comes along with it, the human mind can't even fully comp- like comprehend that type of scenario. You know what I mean? Like it's so wild and surreal and you don't even understand what's happening to you. And especially as a child, right? Like as a child, it's just so, I saw it and I saw a lot of my peers, you know, get into that scenario. You know, when I was even, I know, I don't know. I just, I I never, I was so like, I don't know. I was so bullied and also like kind of insecure um, in general when I was younger um, that I didn't even know what <laughs> what was happening, to be honest. Like I always saw other individuals on Nickelodeon Disney as like the stars. And then I was just kind of this like, do you remember me? You know what I mean? Like I was on Zoe 101. Like, do you remember? I, I never even I did I know it was two seasons only you know what I mean and so I just didn't have that same machine behind me I guess like the machine was very quick and because of the bullying it got me straight out of there and I didn't have um most of my teen years weren't in the system of these um child star breeding whatever the hell you want to call them you know what I mean? What does Kevin do? <laughs> I just saw someone be like, what does Kevin... I don't know what Kevin does either, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, Alison Stoner. Her series is amazing. I haven't been able to get through all of it, but what she's doing is remarkable. Um, and I, I, I'm bowing to her for doing what she's doing. It's really incredible how she's breaking that all down. And I think it's super important that we do. Um, and she's really the ringleader in that um she is so well she is so well articulated um what she's trying to uh communicate to everyone and what she's saying is so 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 true I mean from what I watched so true and so all of us child stars were in that but maybe I wasn't in it for as long you know what I mean so I was like to the side um a little bit and then you know, just started doing other jobs that weren't involved within Nickelodeon and Disney. And so I wasn't part of that system. And so for me, the narcissism wasn't able to grow um, as much, I guess, because for every 500 auditions you do, you only get maybe one. Um, So there's so much rejection in the industry that I felt more insecure than ever confident, to be honest with you. There was more doubting of myself than ever um, feeling like I was the shit, basically. Like that's that's how it felt for me. But these individuals like the Jonas Brothers and um, I mean, the high school musical phenomena, um, all of that, you know, that these were huge. um, I don't even know what to say. They were just massive. And how do you handle that as a child, right? I mean, how do you properly handle those scenarios? So that's me saying a little bit about the Jonas Brothers and giving a little bit of slack um, about what they might have been bred into, indoctrination. Then you got religion involved in there, Um, the purity ring situation. You got those things in there and that could definitely have a huge effect on you. And I'm not discredit. I'm not trying to put that aside in any type of way. Um, but he was also kind of douchey um, <laughs> from like kind of douchey, you know, like I barely spoke to him and he was asking for, you know what, you know, and he had a purity ring on and it was just very odd. And so my, you know, my, my opinion of him then wasn't the best per se, but we were, you know, I was a lot younger, but now seeing how the Sophie Turner thing is turning, Sophie Turner thing is turning out. <laughs> Sorry, that. I didn't realize that's where it was going to go. Sophie Turner thing is turning out, you know, there's something extremely, um, some red flags there, just some red flags there. And like, why can't a mom like party and be a good mom and like work hard? You know, like how come men have been able to do that forever? Like a dude will legit be able to like not be a dad and literally like run away from the family and come back and everyone's supposed to praise him. Right. But like, what a woman went out to the bar and drank and then she's an incredible like what I just 
I smell misogyny and I smell the patriarchy um, and so much of that TMZ spread that I, I didn't like it. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's the thing. That's why I, that's all I was trying to point out was the fact that I, you know, a lot of my life as a female in the industry, I was exploited. I was exploited. Um, I was used up. I was A B U S E D. Um, and I found it to be more common in individuals that weren't white males, to be honest with you. As I got, as I got older, I realized that that was not something that normally happened to white males, but it was something that happened to everyone around them. And it was really bad, honestly. It was it was really bad. And what I was trying to speak up on is the fact that we just hyper normalize so many um, patriarchal behaviors that we need to be aware of. We need to be cognitive. Like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But, but it's super hyper aware of how we either normalize that or accept that into our culture, especially if it's harming others or degrading them or dehumanizing them in some type of way. And I honestly didn't even know I was a human being until I was like 26 years old. Really, to be quite honest with you guys, like I really didn't realize I had, I was a human <laughs> um, through the industry exploitation, through male um, ABUSE. I, it took me a long time to see myself as a human being. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who's ever felt that way. Um and it took me a lot to like build my confidence and feel like I had something to say and uh, be brave enough to say certain things, even though so much was against me. Um, but that took a long time. That took a really long time. And a white male, for example, in this industry can literally just be like, I didn't do it. <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't do it. And that's all they actually even have to say to be believed and to continue on with their career. The privilege is strong. The privilege is strong over there. The privilege is real strong <laughs> over there. Yeah, cognizant. Exactly. That's what I meant to say. That's that's it. Allison supports Amber Heard too. I didn't know that. That's great. Um, because I I know remember this chat's supposed to be very respectful of everyone's opinion with the Amber Heard Johnny Depp scenario. So let's always be respectful, treat people as human beings. Um, but it's great that she supported Amber Heard. Um, that's because it was a brave thing to do, especially during the time of that trial. It was extremely there was a lot of repercussions for standing up for Amber Heard. Um, it was easy to stand up for Johnny Depp. That was like almost like easy peasy. Um, but the bots and everything came after you if you went ever again. Even if you said one thing against Johnny Depp, it was like, and it was like, it'd be like 500 bots in your comment section. Yeah, they can literally get away with anything. I don't know with Nick no, Jonas. He's like married, right? Nick Jonas feels like he's like married. I don't know. I never really, I never like had any kind of connection with Nick, Nick Jonas. I didn't. I only knew Joe Jonas. And the more I'm reading about you, Joe Jonas. <laughs> Sorry, but like, you know, not really, not, I'm not really down. So moving forward um, on today's episode, um, where, where are we? Okay, Sophie Turner. Okay, so here she is. So here she is suing him with an abduction suit. I mean, that's just like horrible. That's just so messed up that she even has to do this. The father has possession of the children's passports, the documents claim. He refuses to return the passports to the mother and refuses to send the children home to England with the mother. Wait, 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 wait. As a mom, I am appalled by that. He's withholding the children and the passports allegedly in, in in this complaint you guys what are you talking about is this real wait did you guys see what i saw that's the complaint i think it's an actual section of the complaint wait look at this the father has possession of the children's passports the documents claim he refuses to return the passports to the mother that's horrible he is so nasty 
Yeah, hostage. Okay, but this is that's actually really scary for a mom. Like as a mom, that would really like legit freak me out to be honest with you guys. Like that's 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 not something to take lightly at all. Like not something to take lightly at all. Oh God. Okay. We're going into that next. I like freaked out for a second because I just realized that's where we're going. So everyone knows, um, my, my well wishes are to Sophie Turner as a mom. I just want to say, I don't know you Sophie Turner. Um, but my, as a mom, like you have my support. Um, and I hope that you're able to see your children and that no one's taking your children from you or withholding them in any type of way, because that's absolutely not okay. Um, and also how you were painted in the media for a, a short time before everyone came into your defense um, was not deserved. And so I just I really wish you the best, Sophie Turner. And um, I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on um, this situation. And so if we need to talk about more, we will. Moving on to. I'm hoping that nobody in my comment section is necessarily a Marilyn Manson fan i mean can we just kind of move through marilyn manson as somebody who is extremely shady and an alleged predator yeah i stand with sophie too hashtag that for sure she has my support as well yeah god ridiculous he, Joe Jonas is just looking, he's not aging well in, in, in 2023, really. He needs to have as much enthusiasm around the mother of his children that he does for waffles. <laughs> like, you guys seen that music video? That's all I'm saying. Okay, yeah, I'm not into Marilyn Manson. Um, Marilyn Manson, um, what to say about Marilyn Manson, right? And he's one of those other individuals that, in my opinion, goes into spaces that are extremely like open-minded and maybe the dark side of things. Like that's kind of something I saw um, his marketing plan, et cetera, um, a around him was that. It was like he kind of he kind of preyed on the dark side um, of human of humanity. And try to find the light in the darkness um, and exploited that. And so when you have someone in those spaces, once again, um, they are going to exploit that. And so a lot of his fan base, I think, is still very supportive of him because of how he advocated towards, like advocated for the dark side of humanity. And I think a very manipulative way. Hi, Melinda. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Thank you so much. Everyone say hi, Melinda. Hi, Melinda. You know what I mean, though? So, I mean, I really saw that with Marilyn Manson. Really preyed on the dark side of humanity um, and definitely the individuals that didn't fit in, right? So, like, if someone didn't fit into normal society, which I don't think any of us do, right? We're also uniquely individual and have multitudes within us I don't think any of us fully fit into this system right I mean the system is such a box and we're all so different and that's what's so in my opinion beautiful about humanity is like how we are all unique and different and special um but a predator can definitely exploit that aspect um of ourselves that doesn't feel like we belong um, or we don't feel like we fit in. And that definitely happened in, in, in my situation when I was younger, that was, ex I was very open. I, I was very expressive about maybe not ever feeling like I, I fit in. Um, especially cause my Zoe 101 experiences, I never felt like I fit in. And so I saw my own, um, predator exploit that, right. And make me feel seen, right. That's what he would do. Like make me feel very seen. Um, and special, which I, sh I deserve to be seen. And I am special, just like we all are, right? Um, and But they'll exploit that. And he had another agenda in mind. And Marilyn Manson really reminds me of that type of individual, where his whole marketing campaign was all about people that didn't feel like they belonged and didn't fit in. 
And it's so relatable. I understand why there are so many individuals that don't feel like they fit in or belong. I mean, the system is shit, in my opinion, and and also traumatic. I mean, just being a human being trying to, I mean, think about the living wage, right? Like, well, how we have to actually work so hard to survive, to actually live. I mean, living has become traumatic in its own way, in its own right, in my opinion. So a predator will see that. Um, and exploit that. And um, I, that's how I felt about Marilyn Manson whenever I um, read up on him or saw like his whole thing and how he was kind of like anti-establishment, which is like cool, anti-establishment. At first glance, you're like, cool. Like, yeah, everyone's kind of anti-establishment, right? Like we hate the man. We we, we don't like um corporate structures per se that exploit other individuals these are all very this should be a natural human mindset um but then what Marilyn Manson was actually doing behind closed doors um was extremely harmful and as exploitative as maybe the establishment um that he was up against in his own mindset or was spreading in general that happens a lot with predators they'll say they're like this and actually they're more like the thing that they're kind of saying they're up against. Very common, like very, very common. Like my ABUSER was the same type of way. He was like anti, uh, you know, capitalism, right? But then he was just ex- as exploitative and um, uh, horrendous and cruel as um capitalism can be you know what I mean so I I saw that in my own light and so when I saw Marilyn Manson I thought kind of seems like the same type of deal and so I don't really trust him per se um and I've read enough and the brave Evan Rachel Wood um you know if I remember correctly he tried to sue her for defamation it got thrown out and anti-slap was granted which is great to see when survivors get justice like that It's really nice to see that. Um, It's really sad when these um, predators try to use our justice system to further ABUSE their survivors. But it happens time and time again. So I'm glad that the anti-slap was granted and that it was thrown out. Oh, thank you so much, Maria. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my God, you can be... We'll talk about that later. You're already a part of it. You're here. Just you being here, you're part of it. And we're so happy to have you here, Maria. Thank you so much. So yeah, anyways, we're going to watch a little clip about Marilyn Manson because guess who his best friend is or a very, very good friend of his is Danny Elfman. And another good friend of Marilyn Manson, I think he's the godfather of his children, Johnny Depp, right? Um, so these are the kind of people that are have been around Marilyn Manson. So we got Johnny Depp accused of X, Y, and Z, and then we got Danny Elfman. So maybe let's watch a little bit of a clip um, of Marilyn Manson and Danny Elfman um, chatting it up when it comes to, what was it, um, Nightmare Before Christmas. What? You're saying this to me? <laughs> I said, well, you definitely have my blessing um, if you could make this happen. So I... Uh, It was kind of funny because there was a five-year delay between when I went out there trying to bring Manson into a project, and then finally here's a project, and Disney's coming to me with his name. Disney's coming to me. Disney goes to all of you creeps. Um, (laughs) I took one picture with Mickey Mouse. (laughs) Disney. That's what what you have to do. Yeah, Mickey Mouse. Just goes to take a picture with Mickey Mouse, and then you can. These things pay off. (laughs) Take take a picture with Mickey Mouse. (laughs) Ew. Okay, I'm like so over. (gasps) Oh my god, Marilyn Manson with Mickey Mouse is terrifying. It was totally Manson's show. What I mean, I was just like a godfather. I was like, you know. Corleone in, in a back room going, hey, here's some men. They go, yeah, that yeah, looks like a good idea. Hey, but, yeah. so what are they my, even talking about? Uh, Sorry, guys, 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 guys. Um, <laughs> Have you ever noticed that like some of these guys like say shit and you're like, what are you guys even talking about? Like, you guys sound so <laughs> dumb in my opinion. Like, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I just don't. And, like, girls are constantly excusing themselves for what they're saying. Like, I'm sorry, was I making sense? Like, I even do that. And you, like, watch these interviews sometimes and you're like, 
um, you're not making any sense. And like, you guys are kind of weird. And what the hell is going on? <laughs> mumbling and creep. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Mumbling and creep. Depp and Manson are besties. He's Lily Godfather. Yeah, exactly. So red flag, red flag, red flag, in my opinion. Like, why are all of these? First of all, there's so many men thus far um, in this industry who have not been accused of anything. You know, we got like Ryan Gosling. I'm trying to think of people on top of you know, the top of my head, which is not many, I guess. Um, but there are so many men that have not been accused of these things. And these men act like we're all being accused. Like it's all of us. Like if you're a man, beware. Like it's like, guys, it's not even all of you. It's like a, it's it's a lot more than we would like it to be. But it's not every man. By the way. It's like legit, not even every guy. Like some guy can be a douche, but he's not someone who's been accused of SA. You know what I mean? So it's like, there's like douches and then there's like predators. Um, but they act like they're all in the same like boat or something. Like someone who is like, you know, SA somebody is this, is the same as somebody who's been called out for being a douche, you know? And it's like, no, these are not even the same thing. And like, can you stop? <laughs> like what? cries in feminists yeah red flags across the board i agree elon musk is a white nightingale for russell yeah i mean elon musk needs to just he has too much time on his hands i thought he was like busy doing things um and he seems like he has way too much time on his hands in my opinion like go fix go figure out your batteries and how to make them longer than they are or something when it comes to your teslas and just stay off of twitter freaking Elon Musk and what's so interesting is Amber Heard dated Elon Musk I guess during that anyways it all like ties into like a crazy web um because maybe there are too many predators obviously in these spaces like I've said but it's not like every dude it's not like there's some type of war against like every freaking dude and they really love to paint it as that as that because they want all the rest of the men to feel like there's some type of war happening so that they protect those individuals just in case someone comes after them and it's like and if you're having to be defensive about someone coming after you then what did you do you know like what did you do because if you didn't do anything <laughs> like i don't know then you shouldn't be so defensive a normal guy like when I see like Sophie Turner, for example, in her articles being like a partier, I'm not like they're coming for us moms. Like they're going to make all of us women seem like we're just partiers. Like I'm just like, oh, that needs to end. Like this is obviously misogyny, but I'm not like creating like a, like a war necessarily about it. I'm not thinking like it's an actual huge, huge problem. Like Andrew Tate wants to make it seem like, like it's like straight up a war. It's like if there is a war, it's been against women and anyone that's not a white male. Like that's where it's been. The war is not against the white dudes. Well, now it is maybe because we're tired of you guys. <laughs> but like, you know, like maybe the war has begun. <laughs> um, we're coming up against you guys because you guys have ranged for too long. Um, reigned for way too long, too many privileges, getting away with crimes left and right. And we're over this bullshit. So maybe the war has begun, actually. <laughs> sorry but you know what I mean I don't mean like actually like a war but you guys get what I'm saying like maybe it has begun Andrew um we are going up against predators we don't stand for predators anymore um and we're going up against you guys and we're standing up for the good guys sure it's about time yeah like let's go actually you know what Andrew date let's go um let's let's go <laughs> Andrew Tate's like if you know like e if if E Predators like was in an alternate universe and it was like a, a male and it was like going up again I feel like that's like he put so much energy into his like predator advocacy in the way that like I put in energy though for the right thing against predator av you know like it's just so funny when I see I'm like well he puts a lot of effort into predators <laughs> like and I'm doing the complete opposite but I'm putting hopefully just as much effort into advocating for survivors because that's what we need we don't need any more Andrew Tate's or Elon Musk's we're good with all the men trying to defend 
all of these alleged predators. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm so freaking over it. It's crazy. <laughs> like behind the camera, I'm just screaming always, I'm over it. Like I just lose my shit sometimes over the fact that, you know what I mean? It's like, get, it's enough. And it's, it's so enough. A war of words. I love that. A war of words. Andrew Tate's like reverse Alexa. <laughs> Like, you guys, should I start my own email chain where I like send you guys emails about predators that are just like made by the AI? Like I was like, have the AI generate <laughs> e predators like email subscription? <laughs> I it would be you guys could totally unsubscribe whenever you want to. <laughs> But Andrew Tate just, okay, well, we're going to get into, by the way, Andrew Tate sent another email this morning. So we're going to definitely read Andrew Tate at the end of this. He sent one of his, his emails to my husband. So we're definitely going to, we're definitely going to read that. But okay, so we got Danny Elfman. Um, Danny Elfman was the voice of Jack in um, Nightmare Before Christmas, um, the film that Tim Burton created. That's who Danny Elfman is. He also composed the music for Nightmare Before Christmas. And he also is the composer of Wednesday. Who's a fan of the... I haven't seen the show Wednesday on um, Netflix. Is it called Wednesday? The the Wednesday Addams um, TV show? The Matrix. The Matrix is coming after Danny Elfman too. <laughs> yeah, Tate has too much time. Too. All these predators have too much time, right? Wait, who said what? Ju Jush Jush. I'm did I say the name right? Okay, I haven't watched Wednesday either, honestly. Um, but it was a huge show, right? It was a huge, huge show. Um, I mean, I just remember everyone talking about it when it came out. Yeah, it's just called Wednesday. Um, so Danny Elfman is the composer who creates the music for that show. Um, and also they have rehired him for the next season of Wednesday, even after the allegations um, about him have been brought to light, um, which is, again, how it goes. They act like they're canceled and there's no canceling. No canceling. OK, yeah, you love that show. I'm sure it's also like a really great show. Um, but Danny Elfman is the one who's making the music for that show. And from what I've read, you guys, I mean, this is this is gross. Like this guy is allegedly gross. Um, he's not just he's not. Is he an alleged dad, too? I wonder. Um, but anyways, he's allegedly gross, like beyond beyond gross. Yeah, that's right. That that Jenna is in it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's allegedly gross, though, you guys. I mean, this is like you can't even make this shit up, in my opinion, like. These, the story is wild and like how he got allegedly caught up in this being public is apparently because of his own like stupidity basically um he just like messed up on payments and then it all got brought to light um which is just like wow bro you can't even like you 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 try to <laughs> my brain's breaking even thinking about this he like put so much effort into um, covering up the alleged the allegations um, against him that even his own cover up failed because he didn't follow through with his own cover up. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's breaking. So he didn't follow up through his own. He didn't follow through through his own cover up to the point where now all of us get to read about it. It's just it's it's absurd. It's absurd. Tim Burton is also problematic. He said some racist. Really? Can someone put into the Reddit the things about Tim Burton? Because I've been trying to look into Tim Burton because it's strange how many individuals around him um, are problematic. And so I would like to look into him more. So if anyone can and put that in the Reddit, I would like so appreciate that. All right. So let, let's go into this for as as long as we can tolerate. Whoa. Oh, right. That's. That's Marilyn Manson. Whoa. Okay. Um, <laughs> you got a taste of what's coming next, um, which is just terrifying. I don't know if you saw that elf man for like half a second, but it was terrifying. But let's get serious here because 
Do you guys remember Ethan Millman? I made fun of him a little bit on um, E Predators Daily, but here he is writing this article. So um, let's give him a little bit of props for finally getting something published, if you know what I mean. If anyone saw my episodes, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah, jump scare. <laughs> I love the delay of you guys like finally seeing what I just witnessed. It was a total jump scare. I mean, look at that guy. You guys. So, yeah. So, Ethan Millman wrote this article. Let's give him some credit. Let's start reading because this deserves to be known. Danny Elfman settled a SA harassment an SH allegation for eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars. I wish I had Brian. Edited out two thirds. Why? The article's not two thirds. Why? 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 Is there not the one that's edited? No, it's straight up from the website. That's oh, okay. I can just read through it. Just don't read anything out loud. Okay, that's fine. My husband's like, this is not edited. So, okay. Well, okay. It's not censored. So I have to go through this lightly. So, so bear with me. Um, but anyways, here's this creepy elf man's face. I mean, he, maybe the only allegation that really should be happening against Danny Elfman, other than this other behavior of his, is that he might be an actual elf man. Like I'm, I'm I, looking at him. He looks like a straight up creepy elf. Is anyone else agreeing? Like, look at him. Are you going to scare us again? No, I'm not. I, I might scare you again. I mean, look at this. This is scary enough. I mean, look at look at this guy. This guy is legit terrifying. He's legit terrifying. All right, so I have to I have to read this lightly because these this isn't edited, so bear with me. So on July 31st, 2018, Danny Elfman, one of the most prolific and celebrated film and television composers of all time. <laughs> of all time. Is he really of all time? I don't even know him that well. I don't I think that's a little bit too much credit, Ethan Millman. Um, let's not buff him up so much. I, I mean, how many people even know who this fool is? Thank you so much, Simmy. Thank you so much, Simmy. But like, honestly, guys, do, how many people even know who Danny Elfman is by name? Like, it's so ridiculous. Okay. Um, entered into a settlement and non-disclosure agreement with a former friend and fellow composer. Boo, NDA, boo. We already know what that means here on E-Predators. This guy is shady. The agreement previously unreported came after she'd accused him of multiple instances of SH. Now, the woman is suing Elfman, according to new court documents obtained by Rolling Stone, alleging that Elfman has failed to fully pay the agreed upon eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars. OK, can I have a stone? What? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I can turn it down a little bit since I'm so close. Is this better? Can I also have my stone? Sorry, guys, if I was blowing out your eardrums, sometimes my audio is not high enough and then it's too high. So um, bear with me here. But what I was going to say was if you're having to pay eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars, like eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars in like a non-disclosure agreement, allegedly to me, like Brian Freeman likes to say, however much is on that check is kind of like admitting to the damages at play here like and just in my opinion like eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars is a lot of money i don't feel like you throw up that money unless you have a lot to lose and or <laughs> or like oh thank you we have a lot to lose or you potentially allegedly you know did this thing and there's evidence that they have that they're bringing forth that raises that price of that settlement 
Because that's usually, I think, maybe how how it goes. <laughs> it's like, what do you have? And the lawyers are like, well, I have this. And then they go back and forth. And then they're like, all right, we got to put up a huge... We're not going to go all the way up to a million, but we're going to cl- go close to it to kind of shut this thing down. Um, but $830,000 is a whole lot of money, in my opinion. That's just um, alarming and a red flag right away. Does anyone else feel that way? Oh, a new member. Hi, Haley. I'm glad I'm not missing any of these members. Like right when I look down, there's right away one. And I'm like, yeah, I get to see you. Yeah, it's like, there's it, that's just strange. $830,000 is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So let's keep going here. Um, when they both signed the settlement agreement five years ago. The filing itself, a breach of contract suit filed in Los Angeles Superior Court on Wednesday, states only that Elfman and Nomi Abadi, hopefully I'm saying her last name. She's such a wonderful human being, by the way. Um, Nomi has a nonprofit for female composers um, that have experienced um, SA or any type of A um, in their in their workspace And she's wonderful. She is super badass, in my opinion. Um, And so reading this was very heartbreaking for me. I didn't know um, this in detail like this at all um, until I read this. And so I'm heartbroken for Nomi. This is a very sad story. And like, you know, women in these workspaces in this industry need to feel safe um, and protected um, and not at the hands of these alleged predators. Like this is just heartbreaking time and time again. So anyways, let's go into Nomi's uh, story here. A 35-year-old musician and composer who met the 70-year-old. He's 70. Oh, man. I didn't realize he's 70 fucking years old. That's old. That's like, that's old. Sorry, that like shocked me a little bit. That's, she's 35. He's 70. Okay. Um, Agreed to resolve an underlying dispute, which included terms that Elfman would make payments in four different categories and various installments over the course of five years, totaling $830,000. And guess what? Elfy boy. Oh, Elfie man. Elf man. <laughs> Failed to pay two $42,500 installments in July 2019 and 2021, the suit claims. Elfman forgot. He was too, um, he was in Narnia doing his thing. And um, sorry, but like, I can't help but not, I see him as an actual elf, you guys. I can't unsee it. Like he like legit to me looks like an elf. It's disgusting. But the story gets gets way grosser, um, sadly. So he forgot he failed to pay these payments. A body is seeking injunctive relief, demanding the full $85,000 she alleged Elfman hasn't paid. While the filing does not include details about the dispute that resulted in the payment, Rolling Stone can confirm based on multiple sources and documents that the dispute refers to claims of S.M., As detailed in a November 2017 police report obtained by Rolling Stone and taken a year after the alleged behavior, a body, a former child prodigy who played in orchestra since age five and won the attention of music institutions such as Juilliard at eight, went to the LAPD. So she went. Here's another story. Once again, they go to the LAPD and guess what happens? Freaking nothing, right? Went to the LAPD with allegations against Elfman that the report categorized as indecent exposure. When asked for comment, a rep for the LAPD said the department was unable to locate the report and that the department has no information to provide and no statement. Wow, LAPD. Shocking. Are you were you just too busy um, um, trying to write reports about where is Shelly? Um, during this time, like Jesus, LAPD, like this is just getting embarrassing at some point. 
per the report, the then 30-year-old composer claimed to the police that over the course of nearly a year, Elfman allegedly exposed himself and M multiple times in front of her without her consent. Disgusting. I'm sorry. That is just... I can't even show it. I can't even show it. But it, it's so... Nobody... I can't believe... I, I No, I can believe it. I'm just so grossed out by that. Like, that's just disgusting, you guys. This guy is in a kid's film. You understand? Like, he's in a kid's film on Disney+. Plus. Like, when I put on Disney+, Plus with my daughter, I see that. Especially during spooky season. And look what this guy was allegedly doing to know me. Horrific. Oh, hi, Daria. Hi, Daria. Oh, hi. Welcome. Thank you so much for being a member. I'm sorry. I was so in a daze for a minute there. Like, it's just so horrific what I just read. <sighs> when asked for comment, Elfman provided a starkly different account of the nature of his and a body's relationship. In a lengthy response to Rolling Stone's inquiries, Elfman, through an attorney, denied, of course, all of a body's allegations, including claims that he'd ever E himself to a body or M in front of her. Elfman painted their relationship as platonic. Shocking. Claimed that a body had attempted to pursue Elfman, the 70 year old man. Elfman, are you really trying? Okay, I gotta go back. Are you real? Oh, sorry, that's later. Are you really trying to make us believe that this young um, woman was going after your elf grandpa ass? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't say that like that, but I, I couldn't help myself. Like, are you real? Is that what you're trying to say here? Is that this talented, you know, wonderful, beautiful young woman was going after your elf ass? <laughs> like, and, and you're trying to spin it? Allegedly? I mean, in my opinion, I keep hearing the same remarks from all of these guys. Like, literally the same remark over and over. It wasn't me, it was her. Or she's this and I'm not that. And, you know, it goes on and on and on. Like, and here's an, a, a can, you're a canceled grandpa at that, at this point. And this canceled grandpa is trying to literally say that she was like, what? In love with you? Like, you know, what, what exactly are you trying to say? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's, it's really embarrassing. Hi from Brazil. Hi, Brazil. It's delusional. And and these men, like, really, because of the patriarchy, they're they're really able to like try and be you know, that this these are facts. They say things like they're facts, you know, and then survivors say things and it's kind of like always um an allegation. And what is interesting is I, I don't know if in the Rolling Stone article, did they say that these this was alleged about Nomi? I, I, wait, I just want to go back to this. <gasps> Look at this, you guys. Elfman painted their relationship as platonic. I guess claiming, but it should really be, look at this, claiming that a body had attempted to pursue Elfman romantically and retaliated against him after he spurned her advances. That, that Wow, this is like the typical, the woman got mad at me, you know, bullshit. But what, interesting, this is not alleged. Like, see how up here it says denied all of a body's allegations. But then when we go into what she said about what he's saying about her isn't really written in that same way. Am I like tripping? I'm sorry. Maybe I'm like too tired and my mom brain's melting. But do you guys notice what I'm noticing? I'm going to go back to this. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Alleged grandpa. <laughs> no, but do you see what I'm see reading? I'm going to wait for a moment because I really want to wait for the chat on this because I feel like maybe I'm tripping. But like when I'm reading it, it doesn't seem like what his claims are. 
It just says claimed. Like it doesn't have like the alleged allegations, et cetera, to it. Yeah. Is Danny a Scientologist as well? Well, we're going to get into that actually. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm so far ahead of you guys. I I don't know if I could wait up for you guys to catch up. But what I'm just reading is I just see time and time again that the survivor, you know, everything against everything the survivor is saying is like alleged, alleged, alleged accusation, accusation. And then when he says what he says, it's claimed. Like, it says claims. It really should say allegations, like, it, or alleged. Like, it doesn't feel, something's weird here. Look, you guys. Here's a body's allegations. And then when we get into Elfman, Elfman painted their relationship as platonic, claiming that a body had attempted to pursue Elfman romantically and retaliated against him after he spurned her advances. I just feel like that could have been written differently. Something about it just doesn't sit right with me after seeing allegations and then going into this, it just, I don't know. When, I don't know. Something's not sitting right with me. How do I respond to accusations so serious? Okay, here he goes. You guys ready for canceled grandpa? Here comes canceled elf. Grandpa Elf. Canceled Grandpa Elf. Here he comes. How do I respond to accusations so serious that being innocent is not a valid defense? Huh. Let me think about it, Mr. Elf. Man. Um, yeah, the accusations are pretty serious. And yeah, allegedly, apparently, allegedly, you did something like this and it is very serious. And yeah, being innocent is not going to be, you can't just lead with innocence. Evidence and actions speak louder than words. So no, you can't just lead with innocent. No, that's, that's just not the case. And also like every single alleged predator that I've seen come forward um, against the survivor is the same thing over and over again. They're innocent. They didn't do it. Um, they don't know what she's talking about. She's after their money. She's crazy. I don't know her. Or like Andrew Tate likes to say, she doesn't even exist. And Russell Brand likes to say it's a conspiracy. I mean, this is getting a little bit crazy. Like the women are starting to not exist. Now it's becoming a mass conspiracy with corporations going up against these men that are going up against the corporations. It's getting even crazier, honestly. It's getting more wild. Yeah, when he speaks, it's a claim. Who said that? Yeah, exactly. Aria? Aria? That's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to state. Like when he says something, it's a claim. But when she says something, it's an allegation. You guys get what I'm saying now? They always give predators the benefit of the doubt. Just a little bit interesting on in Ethan Millman's writing there. Ethan. Ethan? <laughs> Ethan hates me at this point. Um, it's okay, Ethan. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to give you a little bit of pointers. And I don't really like the claimed and allegations part of your male female article, to be quite honest with you. Um, okay, so it is excruciating to consider that a 50 year career. Oh, here he goes trying to make us feel guilty about his career. Here he goes. Wah, I'm so sad about another white man's career that's just uh, <laughs> like you're he's playing at the Hollywood Bowl, you guys, by the way, in uh, October 27, 28th and 29th. I think it's like, what are you talking about your career? Your career just keeps going on um, and you're trying to make everyone feel super bad about your career. How about um, uh, a, a woman's life and um, her career? Right. So 
and they don't even women never even say that they're never like my career blah 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 and they're the ones that actually experience a lot of detrimental impact on their careers and guys really love to lead with their careers may be destroyed in one news cycle as a result of vicious and wholly false allegations about SM. Elfman says in a statement to Rolling Stone, Miss Abadi's allegations are simply not true. Shocking. I allowed someone to get close to me. Oh, you allowed a body to get close to you. Ooh, God. Without knowing that I was her childhood crush come on man you did I'm sorry you did not say that this is just heartbreaking and that her intention was to break up my marriage and replace my wife wow you're really going for the whole um I don't know, female, like what is it called? Fatal attraction. It's a total fatal attraction. Um, I don't know if anyone remember that remembers that film. It's old. I think it came out in the eighties, but it's just, it's just like women are crazy. Um, mistresses are crazy, but the guy's allowed to have a mistress and like the guy's allowed to like cheat on his wife and um, leave his children for a mistress. And then they paint the mistress though. Um, and the wife, as either the wife's overly emotional and doesn't understand how men do things. And then the mistress is crazy trying to like replace the wife or like get a hold of money or, you know, whatever. It just seems like that's what it is time and time again. Yeah. Oh, amazing. I didn't know that Natalie, Natalie Portman just testified about that at the UN. That's incredible. Cause it's, it's, it's very, very true. It's very, very true. Yeah, Natalie Portman just recently got separated from her husband um, and her husband from someone sent me, I think is friends with my um, A-B-U-S-E-R. So interesting that they're separated now and um, I saw that he was friends with, um, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like it just constantly seems like these like men do this to women is like the, the wife's overly emotional and doesn't understand. And the mistress is crazy um, and wild. And like, you know, it just, I just see that time and time again. And it's just, it's just really sad. So, and I'm not even saying that Nomi's not the mistress here. I'm just saying like how he's trying to paint this. Right. All right. So here we go. When this person realized that I wanted distance from her. Oh, yeah. He was the one who was trying to say this is not consensual. And no me, he's saying, was the one that wasn't honoring his consent. You guys, you know who Danny Elfman's lawyer is? I think. I mean, from what I looked into, it's Johnny Depp's lawyer. That woman, Camille. What's her name? Cam Camille. 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 Camille? What is her name? I, I honestly could not stand that woman. That woman was just ugh, made my skin crawl during that trial. Yeah, they always flock together. Yeah, exactly. Her. That's Danny Elfman's lawyer right now. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Um, but he's trying to paint that Nomi wasn't honoring his consent. I find that very interesting that he's trying to paint it like that. In my opinion, it just, it feels like it's like a, a Darvo move right there. Just saying, um, don't get upset. Canceled grandpa elf. <laughs> um, so anyways, here we go. I allowed an ill advised friendship to have far reaching consequences and that error in judgment is entirely my fault. Oh, so you only um, take accountability. Oh, I got it. I have to keep stopping. Elfman, Mr. Elfie, you only take you're taking accountability about that. Really? That's what you were OK with taking accountability for was that. Because that makes you seem like a better guy there. 
when you're talking about what you're talking about. Like, oh, you know, like she was just crazy, man. Like maybe it was just my fault for letting her into my life and like fucking up my family, man. Like that maybe was my fault. (laughs) Grandpa, that is so I don't I don't personally believe that just because that just seems bizarre to have to say that. It's very interesting that you're having to over explain yourself about your relationship with Nomi, your friendship with Nomi, and you're going, you're having to over explain yourself in a way that makes me feel that maybe, um, I don't know. It doesn't, it seems like you're a little defensive and having to over explain yourself about something that maybe should be extremely simple. Um, and maybe you should be taking accountability for something else than what you're choosing to uh, take accountability for. We have a Camilla. Who's a stan of her? Sorry, I just saw that. Who's a stan? I, it's okay. Listen, have your opinion, but we be very human and respectful of one another in the chat. Um, just because it's very important to do so, so that we don't create any type of culture of, you know, um, and, and unless somebody is being inappropriate, then we can actually get them out of the chat for, for doing so. But let's be, I try to be respectful too, because tr- Johnny Depp is so triggering for so many people and for survivors in general, like survivors are actually triggered by this. So we have to be aware of that. I don't stand her though either. <laughs> I'm I'm not standing her, okay? I'm I'm not pro her whatsoever. I did not like what I saw that Amber Heard had to um experience with her uh during that trial. I thought it was horrendous in my opinion. But let's continue with Danny Elfman trying to s- say that Nomi is somebody who was obsessed with him and didn't honor his consent when it came to himself and his family, etc. So, um, I have done nothing indecent or wrong and my lawyers stand ready to prove with voluminous, voluminous evidence that these accusations are false. This is the last I will say on this subject. Okay. You said a whole lot. So we're glad that this is the last that you will say because we're, we're good. Um, subsequent to the initial statement, a representative for Elfman claimed that Elfman and Abadi's limited interactions, which did not involve sexual less contact, were very con- were fully consensual. Fully? Con- why was he saying it, it was consensual? Wait. Limited interactions which did not involve SC were fully consensual. The representative also claimed that the initial statement was a reaction to the Me Too movement. This is another thing that these these bros love to do is be like, it's because they blame it on a movement. Like, it's like, I, maybe this is like radical to say here, but like, I kind of feel like I have to say it in the sense of just like kind of giving like a really extreme crazy um comparison would be like someone like getting upset with like the civil rights movement as a white person and be like that's why this is the way things are now you know and you're like this that was the civil rights movement dude like what unless you are a racist there is no why are you even talking about anything you know what i mean like what like to blame a movement for encouraging survivors to come forward is just so the wrong take and already immediate red flag for me because why why would you throw the movement under the bus um as as a reason for this happening like oh because of the movement now all of us are what misogynists Yeah, a lot of you are, and that's what you need to take accountability for. Not the fact that it was an ill-advised friendship, in my opinion. You should be taking accountability for the fact that, whatever, I'm not going to go into full details, but I'm getting triggered by just like reading Mr. Elf um, speak. (laughs) 
It's just ridiculous. It's just like ridiculous in my opinion. All right, let's move on. When faced with threats from the other party to go public with untruths at the height of the hashtag Me Too movement, why, are you against the Me Too movement? Elfman faced the impossible choice between settling and continuing his career and earning a living for his family. Wow, he's still talking? I thought that was the last he had to say. Why is it continue? <laughs> I thought he said that was the last that he had to say and then it just continues. Elfman, Elfman. Faced the impossible choice between settling and continuing his career and earning a living for his family or deciding to fight what at the time was an unwinnable battle to tell the truth. Oh, wow. Danny chose his family. <coughs> Sorry. When men throw their family in it, as a mom, it just makes me upset because I just would like my my partner to not mention my the family in these situations. Like I just want the family to kind of be separated. Like I just don't want them even mentioned in these scenarios just because they don't need to be in my opinion. I don't think the family needs to be mentioned. I don't think the children needs to be mentioned. I don't think the wife needs to be mentioned. I think the person is the only person who should be speaking for themselves um, and only for themselves because otherwise I get that David Miscavige vibe where he's like talking on behalf of Shelly and Shelly's not the one being able to speak for herself. And it just gives me red flag, red flag, red flag. Um, I just don't feel like the family should be involved when you're being accused of something this serious. Um, I just don't like it. I don't know if like the chat agrees or not, but the kids should not be a shield. Um, I just really don't like the kids being the scapegoat for these individuals. They deserve to be separate and, and left alone and not a part of this. I just don't like it. I don't even want my kid down here on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, why are you mentioning your children? Like, it just seems like he's trying to paint this image of himself that he's trying to portray to make himself look extremely innocent um, and then make the Me Too movement look like some type of witch hunt or something. It's like, you know, the witch, the witch hunt was a femicide, bro. And you have nothing to do with that, by the way. Like, nothing. That was like a legit femicide. So like when men try to like act like they're they're coming for them, you know, in this Me Too movement, it's like, wow, you know what women have been through for like thousands of years, man? And we don't even burn it all down. Like I'm so like it's so incredible and unbelievable that us women don't like burn it all down. Like we have men deciding what we can do with our bodies. We got men. um the R word, S A S H, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we, 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 we haven't burned it all down. <laughs> and to me, that's just so interesting and unbelievable that I don't know, we haven't burned it all down because to be honest with you inside, sometimes I want to burn it all down. I think that's like a natural, um, feeling against your oppressor, right? Um, I believe that the patriarchy is oppressive and it is an oppressor. And then those that participate in that ideology are oppressors. Um, and so I don't like when a guy tries to use a movement that was trying to um, allow women to speak up about something they weren't able to speak up about for so long. Um, I don't like a man who uses that as like um, a catchphrase, like, oh, am I me too now? Like, oh, like the me too movement hashtag, like making it a hashtag. I don't like that because really what me too movement was um, and is was a, a gateway for so many individuals to come forward um, about S.A., S.H., et cetera, for the first time in a long time um, without being shut up by lawyers, by corporations, by institutions. They were allowed to say, me too, me too, me too. And the more me too's that happened, women were starting to go, oh, shit, that's a lot of us. You two? Like, 
you two like I remember it I was like oh my god like my best friends like oh my god my neighbor oh my god you know you're starting to go oh my god I'm not the only one that experienced this and it is wrong and it is wrong and that took me a long time to actually even understand it was wrong until the me too movement you know and then we have Danny freaking Elfman here trying to use the me too movement as a shield My screen went off. Sorry, I was muted right when I was getting heated. No, I got it. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. But the Me Too movement, for example, with Michael Milos, his girlfriend, for example, was just horrific to me and and, and said on her podcast that he got Me Tooed. And he she brought it down to a level that it was just this like catchphrase that this that it was a hashtag and that it wasn't a movement. And Me Too was a movement. It helps so many individuals understand what had happened to them and also give them the the courage to come forward when so many individuals felt so scared to come forward against these public figures and Me Too movement encouraged and gave them the courage to do so. So when you see elves, sorry, I'm trying to make myself laugh because I'm sad, but like when you see elves like Elfman try to degrade like try to degrade the Me Too movement. That to me is a red flag. Like, why are you trying to degrade that, bro? Like you're such a white male doing that. Do you know what a movement is like for people that aren't white men? By the way, it means a lot. It means a lot. It means a whole lot to have a movement. A movement is so important historically, man. But you're a white male. You don't understand that, right? You have the privilege to not need that, right? Because you're what everyone's fighting up against, right? (laughs) Sorry. But right? Like you're the one that everyone's fighting up against. Like what does a white male need a movement for? Movements are all up against white males for the most part, to be honest. So they're like, "Ah!" get the white, get the movements away from me. Sorry, that like upset me for him to use the Me Too movement because it's such a, It was so historical, I feel like, the Me Too movement. E-Predators wouldn't exist without the Me Too movement, probably. It wouldn't. I got educated through the Me Too movement. So it just, like, really upsets me when a white guy is, like, the Me Too movement, like, whatever about it. Ridiculous. Okay, let's let's continue. I'm sorry. And and, and Nomi is so wonderful, and this is just, like, uh, okay. All right, here he goes. Hashtag Me Too movement. Elfman faced the impossible choice between settling and continuing his career and earning a living for his family or deciding to fight what at the time was an unwinnable battle to tell the truth. There, truth, truth prevails, man. You don't, it's not an unwinnable battle. 
Danny. Oh, he's Dan. Yeah. Danny chose his family. The representatives say it is disappointing, but sadly not surprising that this baseless lawyers love to say baseless, even though it's not necessarily baseless, that this baseless narrative would be revived now that the payments have stopped. (gasps) He said now that the payments have stopped. No, 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 no. Danny. Danny, you forgot to pay your 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 payments, man. Yeah, yeah, you know that NDA that you got no me into. Yeah, yeah, you forgot to pay that settlement agreement, and you owe right that settlement agreement. You agreed to that, and now you're trying to spin this as if no me, this person, this survivor, in my opinion, is someone just going after your money. No, I don't believe that, man. I don't believe that whatsoever. And, and, and wasn't her fund supposed to go towards her nonprofit that was supposed to keep women safe that were composers in your fields? Didn't all the funds go to the nonprofit and not even to know me, man? But no, that what I'm reading is you're trying to to paint know me as somebody who is um, after your money, obsessed with you, trying to replace your wife, and you're degrading the Me Too movement all in the same breath. And I just find that despicable, honestly. Um, As a survivor, this is my opinion. This is not a fact. This is my opinion. Um, But I find it despicable that you're spinning it this way in a way that that degrades everything that you agreed upon, um, $830,000, you agreed on that. Um, and now you're, you seem to be upset more about forgetting to make the payments than you are about the Me Too movement. You know what I mean? Elfman? <laughs> Sorry. This is ridiculous. <sighs> okay. God, it's like the same thing over and over. It is disappointing, but sadly not surprising that the baseless narrative accusations alone should not and do not equate to guilt. But what about your $830,000 agreement, Elfman? What is that? I just want to know what that is, because when I when I hear someone settling like that, my brain always goes to like, oh, wow, that, that that's a little bit sus. Like, why are you settling so high? Um, this is just my opinion. And Danny will defend himself and clear his name. Okay, they all clear their name in trial, apparently. Um, and we've seen how that goes. With the volume of evidence and the other party's own words, her words speak for themselves. Honestly, your words speak for yourself. Like, you grossed me out in your own freaking statement, man. Like, I didn't like anything you had to say at all. Um just whatsoever. And at a, a February press conference two days before this year's Grammys, I was there with Nomi. A body addressed the room as a survivor of SM in the music industry and as an advocate on behalf of the Female Composer Safety League, FCSL, a nonprofit group she founded in 2020, whose mission is to break stigmas in the industry surrounding trauma and shame. While she didn't name Elfman in her speech, I guess an NDA, right? A body, a recording Academy member, stated that she didn't vote after she saw the list of Grammys nominees, which she said included A. Elfman was nominated for a Grammy Award this year. A body also called for the end of non-disclosure agreements that prevent alleged victims of SM from speaking out. She said, and I was there, and I was crying the whole time, She said, I saw the names of alleged A who were nominated for Grammys this year and I was unable to bring myself to vote, a body said at the press conference. I simply cannot fathom the idea of going along with an industry that allows silence breakers to be vilified or participating in a voting process that louds abusers while some of us are barred from career opportunities because we spoke out. 
there is a clear and urgent need to center the experiences of survivors of SA in the music industry who have lost their careers because they were A and silence, she added. Just so sad. Like you hear her say that and you feel emotion. You know exactly what she means. You know, and it feels real and it feels heartfelt and it feels just and it feels human and it feels um, compassionate. And you read his statement, right? And his statement just seems cold and calculated and um, defensive and full of blame. And it doesn't hit you the same way as when you hear Nomi's words, right? I mean, just in my opinion, as a survivor, like, that's just how I feel. That's just how I feel when I read her words versus his as a survivor um the silencing needs to end that's what the me too movement started by the way danny elfman if you forgot that's what it started man it started the end of the silence era okay um okay so uh you have a power dynamic invites a and here we go i'm trying to find Basically, what ended up happening, though, you guys, I can't even go through this all today. Um, but basically, what ended up happening was he said that the um, fluid, what is called the alleged fluid that was in a, a cup that was, I think, a scent to Nomi, um, he claimed it now recently as Cetaphil. He said it was Cetaphil. And I guess I Googled it and I saw that um, the word P, um, apparently in peas, um, they use Cetaphil to mimic or to look like um, a bodily fluid. And so Elfman saying that the image was not of his you know, I can't say certain things on YouTube, um, but that it was Cetaphil, the cleanser, the cleanser, you guys. And so a couple months ago, while I was still pregnant, I made this um, ridiculous, okay, I'm telling you guys now, don't jump when I show it, because I know everyone jumped when I first showed it. Don't jump. Um, it's coming up, so don't, don't be shocked. Um, we created this as a um, little ad um, on the side of our Eat Predators Daily um, page. And here is Elfman himself. Apparently, I guess he is an ambassador <laughs> now for um, Cetaphil, but they had to change the name just for him. And they changed it to Seta Elf, you guys. And the theme song that goes along with this is... This is Seta Elf. This is Seta Elf. Seta Elf. This is Seta Elf. This is Seta Elf. God, I'm sorry. I just need to laugh for a second. Um, and apparently Seta Elf defends against five sensitive allegations, you guys. Um, it, being an actual elf man. Yeah, it defends against that sensitive allegation. Um, it erases police reports, you guys. Seta Elf erases police reports. And and it fights against bodily fluids in a cup, um, indecent exposure, and covers up, guess what? Elf DNA. Um, so that is what I, I'm got to zoom in on this guy for a second here. Can we, whoa, it's goopy. Oh, wait, no, don't go away. Oh, there you are. It's goopy, gloppy gel. Um, so yeah, that's what I think, uh, Danny Elfman is doing these days. Um, if you, um, Want to support Nomi and her journey 
coming forward, then I would suggest following her Instagram page, um, just following Nomi in general or supporting her. Um, E Predators will be protesting his Hollywood Bowl show that's coming up in October. Um, because obviously that this is where I personally stand when it comes to what Elf Man had to say. I just personally, it doesn't sit right with me. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's scary. Yeah, it is scary. Um, I think he is an actual elf, by the way. I think he's lived like thousands of years. Like no one's just noticed this by now, but like I feel like he's an elf, like a legit elf and a creepy elf at that, um, in my own opinion. Wait, what? <laughs> I love that someone just screams in the comment section. Um, but thanks for listening to Nomi's uh, story, you guys, because I think it's important for us to be aware of what, um, and and also we'll put into the Reddit thread um, the Rolling Stone article about Danny and Nomi. So if you want to read the entire thing, and obviously without my commentary, go right ahead and read it because I think it's important to do so. Um, and as a mom, I really don't want it on Disney plus in my opinion, after reading the entire article, I really don't feel like he should be on a kid's network just seems silence the silencers. (laughs) I feel that silence the silencers. All right, you guys, where, where are we at? Um, this is the end where, where, what's, what's, oh, I forgot to say this. Okay. So apparently Danny Elfman's brother and dad are Scientologists, which is so weird. Like while I was looking into Danny Elfman, like side note, I found Bodie Elfman, which is his brother, who's also an other elf, by the way, um, definitely an elf. Look at this elf. Um, but it says here, raised in it by father Richard Elfman. So strangely enough, tied into all of this, Danny Elfman's dad is a Scientologist, allegedly, and so is his brother. So I just wanted to, you know, note that for everybody because I find that to be extremely interesting um, and something we should definitely, definitely note. Um all right. I, I'm kind of ready. I haven't read this yet. Where is it? Okay. You guys, <laughs> you guys, I haven't read this yet, but Andrew Tate sent another email. So I would like to read to you guys, Andrew Tate's new email <laughs> and it's titled war. So let's, I haven't read it yet. So this is my first time I'm reading it along with you guys. Yeah, not weird at this point. I I agree, Adam. So let's go into Andrew Tate's uh, email. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm so scared to read this. I can't. What is he going to say? All right. <laughs> Everything is war. All of it. <laughs> Sitting in the commute without losing your patience is war. <laughs> Trying to find a way to escape the slave job is war. Okay. Oh, kid. Thanks for becoming a member. Sorry, I'm in the middle of this Andrew Tate ridiculous email. Thank you so much, kid. Okay. Proving yourself in front of brothers worth having is war. Managing my $500 million portfolio is war. Sitting in prison after a matrix attack. (laughs) He did not say after a matrix attack. Sitting in prison after a matrix attack is war. It doesn't matter where you are in life. (laughs) Wait, I cannot read this. This is insane, Miko. This is not a real email. He did not actually send this email. There's no way. It it doesn't matter where you are in life. All of it is war. It was war at the bottom. It is war at the top. 
<laughs> Become comfortable with the chaos and endless pain. Get used to getting hurt. If you refuse to fight your own war for significance, you'll simply end up as a casualty in someone else's. Tate. <laughs> All right, Tate. Settle down, man. <laughs> Yo, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think his face is when he's writing these emails? I would love for him to just go live while he's writing. I feel like he probably deleted so many drafts of that email before he actually sent out that email. Like it is so the matrix attacks are definitely real. <laughs> We've learned it from Russell. We've learned it from Alex Jones. We've learned it from Andrew Tate. Um, we've learned it from all of these um, alleged predators that the Matrix is what is after them, which is freaking. Wait, we got to work on your <laughs> Andrew Tate accent. I can't I can't even do it any other way than like just a bro and that's my only bro voice that I have to be quite honest with you I have nothing else left inside of me except that that's it that's all I can do that's all I can do but honestly his words speak for themselves and um I think we all get the gist of what Alex uh, I'm mean, sorry I was gonna say Alex Jones <laughs> Alex Tate it's it's Alex Russell Tate I think like that's that's the name I'm gonna give for them all it's this Alex Russell Tate um, they're all one person at this point, and um, that's them, you guys. God, well, that, that was a long live um, in the midst of a bunch of um, technical difficulties with a cord that wasn't actually the problem. But thank you guys so much for joining another journey with me about alleged predators and um, Please follow Nomi. Let's put that in the comment section. Also, we can put that in the Reddit thread um, and share Nomi's nonprofit to support her. I think that's really important for us to do. Um, and what else? What else? Protest is still coming up. Um, please share it. Please spread the word. If you know anyone in Los Angeles who wants to come, please let them know. Um, we will be live streaming the Scientology protest. Um, and we will be giving the BTS of the entire experience in our Patreon. And also a side note is that this weekend, my husband and I will be going live making signs. So if anyone wants to do a virtual protest and put it into the Reddit thread, please like make a sign alongside all of us. Um, and post it in the Reddit thread. And so if you're not in Los Angeles, you can virtually protest with us. That would be so appreciated and wonderful. Am I forgetting something, Minko? Uh, the Russell Brand clip is there if you want to play it before you go. No, it's, it's too heavy. I've gone so light, I can't go back heavy. <laughs> That's Danny signs, Elfman. All the Scientology signs, yeah, but. It's been so long. I don't want to like bring everybody down too much of a wormhole, <laughs> but I could bring it to the next episode. And also I will talk about Drake Bell next week. I think that's important to talk about Drake Bell actually, because I haven't even looked into it deeply myself. So if anyone wants to pull in any Drake Bell clips or links into the Reddit thread for next week's episode, I would really appreciate that because I honestly haven't read too much because sometimes it's all too triggering. And so, yeah, please let me know. And what was I saying? Scientology. Yeah. Please join us this weekend while we make protest signs. And I'll pull up what we didn't mention today um, about Scientology. I'll pull it up while we're making signs. So bring a mocktail or bring an actual drink and join us this weekend. And thank you guys so much. And I adore you guys all so much. What is everyone saying? Thank you. Yeah, that's what I try to do. I want to like laugh on here as well. Like I don't want us to get... I don't know. Survivors are like always re-traumatized and it's just triggering in general being a survivor. So like I just try to bring a little bit of humor into this so that we can laugh a little bit um, and then get serious when we need to at the same time. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see. You when are we, wait, when are we going live? Saturday? I think Sunday. Or Sunday. Sunday. We'll go live Sunday and, and show a protest sign. 
and make one. Yeah, we that'd be fun. Do like a protest sign party on Tuesday. Yeah, we can do Sunday and Tuesday. Yeah. So join us. <laughs> and please, if you make a protest sign, please put it in the Reddit um, so we can see it. Please get creative and have fun um, getting a- active um, in this protest, even if you don't live in Los Angeles. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you Sunday unless something else happens.